Hello everyone and welcome back to the course. Today I will present to you the first lecture about the history of plant breeding. So here is the outline of my presentation. I will start with the history of plant breeding and this will be followed by a short introduction to domestication. Then later I will uh, present to you the early works in plant breeding and lastly about the scientific disciplines relevant to plant breeding. In our history, we learned that the culture of our ancestors gradually switched from a nomadic lifestyle to a sedentary living. So what our ancestors did before being a hunter-gatherer is to move from places to places to hunt and gather food and later they decided to settle down and produce their own selected plants and animals. So this period of historical shift occurred over 10,000 years ago that has led to invention of agriculture. According to the archaeologist, the cradle of agriculture is in the Fertile Crescent. So this is shown here in the picture, the green shaded part, this is the Fertile Crescent. So we have here the Nile River, uh, Jericho, and the Mesopotamia, where you can find the Tigris Euphrates River. So I think in our map, this is in the Middle East. We have here the Middle East countries. I think here is the Israel, and or maybe here, and the part of Egypt. Okay, so our ancestors, um, they began uh, soil cultivation, seeding, and harvesting uh, in this uh, region. And this is supported by um, the findings of archaeologists. Uh, in their excavation, they found many remnants or artifacts that uh, prove that our uh, ancestors were really doing agriculture uh, during those times. In a sedentary living, our ancestors uh, began to gather and uh, cultivate crops. So they collect these crops from wild relatives and uh, the collection or gathering of uh, wild relatives and putting it under human care is what we call domestication. So this domestication, however, has caused genetical, physiological and morpho morphological changes in those wild relatives. So for example, we have a wild mustard. So our ancestor, uh, they select for leaves and that led to this modern kale. Uh, for example, uh, our ancestors select for axillary buds that led to the Brussels sprouts, cabbage, selection for apical tip bud, broccoli, selection for flowers and stems, and as well as selection for stem, this call rabi. So, and the process of domestication has led to a variety of uh, brassica species, not only for brassicas, but in other uh, crops. The wheat and barley are another sample crops originated from wild grasses. So in the picture below, we have here the wild wheat. As you can see, it's slender. The panicle is slender compared to the later domesticated varieties of uh, wheat, we have a bigger panicle with uh, longer ons, and this one many uh, panicles or many uh, seeds in a panicle for bread wheat. Another uh, crop that is domesticated from wild uh, species is the most famous corn. So here uh, it is Teosente, the wild relative of corn where this new uh, corn or maize variety is derived and if you're going to compare them the teosante has many branches unlike the maize or corn with only one stalk and along the stalk you can only find at most if not uh, you can have only one ear produced in this uh, plant however in teosante you can have many ears along the length of each branches and you have several number of uh, tassels here and like here in the maze you have only one tassel you have only you have also here uh, the teosanti 
year as you compare with that you said there's only one uh, row or even two rows of uh, for for the seeds to grow whereas here the corn there are many rows and many seeds are produced in comparison the ear produced in the modern corn are or is much bigger than uh, the ear produced in Theosanti wild species. So corn is a completely domesticated plant. What does this mean? It means that once you plant corn in the field or in the wild without human intervention, they will not grow as they are when we produce them or we grow them in the field. So meaning corn is dependent, completely dependent upon human intervention. So the segregation of traits uh, that differentiates the cultivated varieties and the wild species is termed domestication syndrome traits, or simply domestication syndrome, coined by G.R. Harlan. So here are the basic domestication syndrome traits according to Harlan. In the left column, you have here the general effects. While in the right corner, these are the modified traits. This domestication syndrome traits will be discussed deeper in the course PBRI 115 or the pre-breeding and plant genetic resources. Plant breeding started after the invention of agriculture and during the process of domestication. During domestication, humans also discovered the time-honored and the most basic technique in plant breeding, which is selection. Selection is defined as the art of discriminating uh, variation within a population to identify and select the best uh, variants. Selection is done based solely on intuition, skill, judgment, and preference of our ancestors, or even today, uh, our farmers, when they save seeds, they select the best uh, plants based on their preferences. For example, here we have uh, rice genotypes, and if farmers wanted to select those highly pigmented rice, they will uh, choose those with darker colors. So selection is an important component in cramp improvement. In fact, selection is about 90% in all the plant breeding programs or plant breeding process. And only a small portion is devoted to other activities like hybridization. The success of plant breeding in this modern era would have not been possible without the early works of the pioneers in plant breeding. So in this slide, we will check some of the recorded early works. So let's start uh, during 700 BC, wherein Assyrians and Babylonians artificially pollinating date palms. In 1694, the knowledge in sex and plants was first reported by Camerarius, while in the 1700s, most of the activity was centered, of, centered in uh, plant hybrid production. In mid-1800s, the progeny test was first reported by Jean Le Contour and Patrick Sheriff, as well as the breeding value and the unit, correct unit for selection by Louis de Morin and Nelson, respectively. Well, the most important activity or um, experiment was conducted by Grigor Mendel, uh, the study was on the inheritance of the garden pea, but it was not published and just rediscovered in the 1900s. So here are the continuation, some of the breeding for disease resistance in 1898, uh, self-fertilizing varieties by Nelson in 1900s. Duan Sen published his work on a single plant and parent selection, and like the road Blood to row method for testing grains by the New York agriculture uh, experiment station in Cornell, and some other important uh, activities done by our uh, pioneers. 
So you can check these early works if uh, if you have time. Uh, it would be nice if uh, you'd be familiar with this. The selection process in the modern day plant breeding is now accurate and efficient with the incorporation of science-based approaches. So here in the left, we have here plant breeding surrounded by several relevant disciplines. So this means that in order for you to master plant breeding, you need to have at least knowledge in all of those fields. So for example, genetics, environmental culture, soil science, botany, plant physiology and biochemistry, pest management, molecular biology, biometries, and data science. So all of these disciplines are really important uh, component in order for you to really understand the process and everything about plant breeding or in order for you to master plant breeding. So with the incorporation of science-based approaches, uh, this is speed, speed up the process of breeding. Also understand biological processes because we have now molecular biology wherein we are now capable of understanding uh, molecular processes in plants that led to the expression of uh, traits, expression of genes, and all that uh, are uh, based on molecular processes. We can also unravel genes underlying complex traits. Uh, we have the data science that helps us uh, do all the computational steps in order to uh, present to us or to untangle genes that are uh, underlying those complex traits via scripting and uh, you know other data science programs so again plant breeding uh, in order for you to master plant breeding you also need to have at least knowledge in all of those relevant scientific disciplines so here are the related disciplines and the description so you can read this through uh, genetics and cellular genetics uh, you can read this one the major scientific discipline that deals with the understanding of the mechanism of heredity and genetic variation from the cellular up to the plant population level so that's really really important and uh, here the data science and bioinformatics this is uh, the newest field that is really relevant to plant breeding so breeders must have a good must be a good data manager and have the knowledge and skills about computer programming and scripting. But for this course, we will not deal with those only if you proceed to graduate studies like masters and PhD. You need to have at least knowledge in all of those fields. But it's not really the hardcore thing that you will need to master genetics, master agronomy, botany, and everything in order for to master plant breeding. So what is required is that you must at least uh, have knowledge and understanding in all those fields and you must be able to incorporate or integrate those um, knowledge in order for you to address biological problems uh, let's say if you want to improve varieties that have higher yield you have to understand the genes that are controlling yield with the use of uh, bioinformatics tools and with the help of agronomists because of course you need to uh, screen your plants in the field and in order for you to gather data. And if you also want to develop varieties that are uh, tolerant to abiotic stress, you must have knowledge in plant physiology. You need to understand the physiological, physiological process in plants, as well as the biochemistry and plant molecular biology, not only in developing plants that are tolerant to abiotic stress, but also to develop varieties that are uh, nutritious or having higher nutritional content you need to understand the biochemical processes that's happening within the plants and with that you can discover the genes that are linked to those traits and uh, that, will, that will help you in the development of those varieties